This pro bike belongs to Simon Andreasen and it's his specialised epic with a completely custom paint job. At the heart of Simon's bike is this absolutely stunning specialised epic frame in a size medium with probably one of the nicest paint jobs I've ever seen. I mean, just talking about the paint job, it's got like a glittering effect in there. And it's actually two or three different colours. From where I am now, it's completely purple, almost iridescent. And from your side, it's probably nearer the green. So we'll spin it around so you can see just how much attention to detail has gone into this paint finish. It kind of reminds me of a lot of early bikes like the Klein Attitudes, when they started doing their linear fade paint jobs. But this is one of the best examples that I've ever seen. Now, as far as suspension goes, that is something that Specialized have got absolutely nailed. So on their Wellcock Cross Country frame set, they've got a system called the Brain, and that is developed in conjunction with RockShox. And it's a totally unique suspension design, whereas the shock has a cable that runs all the way down here to an inertia valve at the back wheel. And that basically can be tailored to the rider's preference. And in this case, he runs it quite soft, which is surprising given what sort of XC bike it is, but the brain inertia valve can resist pedaling action and effectively lock the suspension out. It's a really, really impressive system. Now at the business end of the bike, the controls, the cockpit area, he's got quite a specific setup. So it's a 700 millimeter, nearly flat carbon bar on there. And that's run with a 130 millimeter stem with a 17 degree rise. And he's got that inverted, so it's completely slammed as low as it can be. And that really reflects in his riding style. As you can see, there's no spaces on the top here at all. That's one of the lowest front ends we've seen. And quite unusual for a cross country racer is the angle of his brake levers, which are nearly flat. That is something you tend to see in gravity based riding like downhill but it does ultimately give you a lot more control on the bike. And as you can see, he's not running a dropper post, so having that crucial control is actually more important on a bike like this. The brake levers themselves are Magura Raceline MTH with the carbon fiber levers, and they weigh next to nothing. They're absolutely lovely pieces of kit. And then handlebar grips themselves, he's gone for foam grips. So they're super comfortable with or without gloves. They're great if you get sweaty hands, and of course, they barely weigh a thing. So down at the front end here is a RockShox SID fork, but it's a specialized brain option, which has got a slightly different damper unit on there, just to reflect the exact way that the brain system works at the back end with that inertia valve. It's a 110 mil space fork, and instead of using the conventional axle, it's got some custom carbon tie axles on here. There's a bit of finishing kit, the rear axles are also the same, and a carbon headset top cap too. Nice little extras there. Wheels themselves are the Rovals, they're SL controls with a 25 mil rim, they're obviously 29 inch wheels made of carbon fiber and they're set up tubeless with specialized rubber on them. Tire choice depends on the terrain he's riding. At the moment it's Renegades front and rear in the regular Gription rubber, but in these conditions where it's extremely dusty and quite blown out, he's actually looking at running the fast track tire on the front that's just got a little bit more of an edge and just deals with those loose conditions. Keeping the tires sealed up is a prototype specialized tire sealant that we've heard very, very good things about. On the Rover wheels, instead of having a dedicated rim tape, they actually have these plugs, which is a really, really nice solution. Very neat, very lightweight, and obviously it's very easy to take out and fix. Finally, the last thing you can see down here is the Magura Raceline MT8 caliper in the trademark neon yellow. And he's running those with 160 mil rotors. Transmission duties on the back of Simon's bike is all down to SRAM Eagle. Good old faithful, 12 speed transmission there, 10, 50, 500% gear range. The amazing black and gold race finish, absolutely amazing looking stuff. As we know, it wears really, really well as well. Up front, he's running an XX1 crank, so it's a carbon crank and it's a 175 mil. He's got a 36 tooth chamber and he's running the SRM power unit on there too. Now, interestingly, he's got the look clipless pedals, the particular ones on here are the extract race carbon, and they're not the ones with the tie axles. Quite happy with these ones as they are. Don't often see those pedals, really, really trick with a sort of carbon cage on them. Nice bit of kit, that. Disc rotor size out back is 160, which you probably can't see because it's dwarfed by the enormous SRAM Eagle cassette there. And of course, it's got the yellow Raceline caliper on there, which is the trademark of Magura brakes. And as for finishing kit, as I said before, it's got the carbon tie, carbon fibre top cap on there. It's just a nice little trick addition. And of course, specialised S-Works saddle with the carbon fibre rails and again with the seat post. Weight, well, that's 9.8 kilograms. So that's about 21.9 pounds. And for those of you who want to know how good this thing sounds, check this out. 
So there you go, Simon Andreasen's custom specialized Epic XCO World Cup race bike. Hopefully you like the bike. If you want to see a couple more great videos, click right down here if you want to see how to repair stanchion scratches on your forks and click down here for a playlist all about other people's pro bikes. Of course, make sure you click on the big globe to subscribe and if you love Simon's bike, give us a thumbs up and let us know what you think of it in the comments.